Hi, it's Alaska Granny. If you've been reading the news at all, perhaps you've been concerned with the military buildup on the Russia-Ukraine border. Well, perhaps that distracted you from the news from our own country, a brawl of 40 people at Golden Corral. I guess in the line at the stakes, someone ordered a well done and the person behind them ordered rare and the person who ordered it rare had their serve first. Then the person who ordered the well done was mad that the person behind them was served first. And a brawl broke out with 40 people in the Golden Corral restaurant. You can see people were actually hitting each other with chairs, picking up high chairs, punching each other over who got served a steak first. What's absolutely ridiculous is the lack of manners and common sense in Americans. And if you think that this could happen over who got their steak first at a restaurant, can you imagine what the behavior will be of many more people if the food runs out? So that was enough for me to head to the grocery store and stock up on some more foods for my prepper pantry. If you are of the belief that when the food runs out or is scarce, people will eat anything, I beg to differ with you. Maybe you will or I would because we're preppers. People want what they like and that's just average normal behavior. Have dinner with your own family to know that people don't want to eat what they don't like. And yes, maybe they should and they should be grateful, but that's not how it works. And I would say more people are not going to eat foods they don't like than you and I. You eat to live. You don't live to eat. And food is to sustain us and help us to do what's next. Anyway, after watching this, I thought it's a great time to head to the store and buy some more foods for my prepper pantry. The food items that I bought are pantry items that should last in the shelf for a few years. Pay attention to the foods you're buying, check the dates on them, then store them properly. The better you store foods, the longer they last. You want to store them cool, dark, dry, and in an airtight container. So foods that come in a can, they're already in an airtight container. But foods that come in a package need to be put inside something else to make sure that critters don't get into it. Think about a box of pasta. The only thing that's keeping the air and the critters out is a piece of cardboard. So these need to be stored better to last longer. The first thing I bought was a box of minute rice. Many of us have lots and lots of rice and even rice mixes, but minute rice is something that's really actually pre-cooked. And you could just add water to it and allow it to soak and you're going to be able to eat it. And that's not necessarily true with your plain old rice. You need to be able to boil water and cook that. So having a package of minute rice helps you not only to be able to get a meal on the table in a hurry, but you have rice that you could prepare without being able to cook. So if you aren't able to use your stove, you can still make some minute rice. It may not be the best rice you ever had, but you can certainly uh, put some water over it, allow it to soak, and it's going to absorb the water and be suitable to eat. I bought two more packages of the Bear Creek soups. You only need to add eight cups of water and you can make a large portion of soup. You can also divide these up and serve portions of it if you like. I made a video a while ago on different ways to add to these soups to make them bigger, better meals, and I'll put a link to that video in case you're interested. These were on sale for $3, and so I was glad I could snap them up. I also noticed that Progresso Soup now has a dry package soup like these, but they're nearly $5, so that's going to be a stretch to want to buy those when you can buy these for $3. So if you can still find the Bear Creek Soups, add them to your prepper pantry. They're very tasty, and they can last for several years. While these come in a pretty sturdy package, I like to store them inside of another airtight container to help them last longer. Maybe you've read about the bird flu and they're calling chickens in some of the southern states. Fresh chicken can be in short supply. Canned chicken has been going up in price. These have gone up in price to $1.99, but they had some on sale 
for one dollar so I grab some to add to my prepper stockpile sometimes you want to have a small can and if you want more add two cans when I initially found them I thought perhaps they were the clearance because they're coming up to their date but these have a best buy date of 2025 so they're going to last a long time in the prepper pantry I have a few recipes that use the taco seasoning mix, but these were on sale for only 39 cents. So this is a nice way to have your prepackaged taco seasoning so that you can add it into one of your, say, shelf meals if you wanted to. I like to combine meals together in a Ziploc bag and then put them all in the pantry. Then if I want to make a meal, I can pull out the bag and make that for a meal. So these can go into my shelf meal, my prepper pantry cleanup recipes, the meals I set aside together. Taco seasoning is also something that's easy to make yourself. I'll put a link to a video I made that gives you the recipe on how to make your own taco seasoning from the spices you probably already have on hand. I bought a few packages of the Pioneer Country Gravy with Sausage. These are pretty tasty and it's an easy way to make biscuits and gravy. I don't always see these in the store and I have ordered them on Amazon and my family likes them so it's good to keep rotating and then replacing your food so that your stockpile stays nice and big. Popcorn can last a long time and so this package can go straight into a canning jar just add the lid and I have the ability to make popcorn or even grind it up and make it into cornmeal. I like to use the cans of Rotel, which are diced tomatoes with chilies in them, but I haven't been able to find them lately. So if you have a can of diced tomatoes, you can add a can of diced green chilies into it, and then you have made your own spicy Rotel type tomatoes. That will be a little bit more than just one can of Rotel, but it's a good way to have the flavors that you want. If you can't find the foods that you want, look around and figure out is there an adequate substitute that can take the place of the foods that are not available so that you can still continue to make the meals that you want and add to your prepper pantry and your long-term food storage stockpile. I picked up four packages of pizza crust mix. These were maybe 79 cents. These are wonderful because you only add water. You stir it together, let it rise for about five minutes, rub it with a little bit of oil and flatten it out and you can make a pizza crust. You can also just bake it as is and then you have a type of flatbread that you could serve with some of your other meals. It helps you add variety with foods that only need water added to them to prepare. I bought a few packages of flour tortillas. We like these in all kinds of different recipes. You can roll just about anything up into a tortilla. You can store them in the refrigerator and they last for several months. But what's nice about tortillas is you can also put them straight into the freezer. You can use them as a type of bread and they take up far less room in your freezer than a loaf of bread and you have the ability to have a bread substitute or a type of grain with your meals. Pasta has been in short supply but I saw some today so I picked up a few boxes of the penne regatta. I also found a box of little tiny pasta, Asine de Pepe. You can easily add some of this into soup and it's going to take no time at all to prepare and to cook. But just like the other pastas, you want to put it into an airtight container. Don't store it just in a cardboard box. I bought a few packages of the Idahoan potatoes. These are wonderful. They last for several years. They're in nice sturdy packages, but I like to store these into airtight containers. Whether I put a bunch of them into a bucket and put on a lid or even into a tote, you want to store them as airtight as possible. Plus, you also want to store them so that critters can't chew on them or the bag can't get punctured. I bought a few cans of refried beans and a few cans of fruit. Make sure that you're rotating your fruit. That's one of the foods that I've had problems with in my pantry. I try to rotate it before the date on the package so that I don't have leaking cans and I don't like to waste food. So buy fruits that you enjoy eating and then rotate them. They're getting harder to find and they're more expensive, but it's a great way to have variety in your prepper pantry by adding canned foods.
Something I've been looking for for a long time are bay leaves or laurel leaves because you can sprinkle these into your dried foods when you're storing them long term and they help repel bugs. But they've been something I haven't been able to find for a long time. How do you know if your bay leaves are still fresh? I made a video about that. You just dip them into a little boiling water and if you can still smell the aroma then they're still going to be fine. I'll put a link to that video if you're interested on how to tell if your bay leaves are still fresh and good to use. Stockpile food while you still can. Use every space that you have to store it and remember that you can stretch foods. Add things like rice, pasta, mashed potatoes and make your meals go a little bit farther. Why be a prepper? So you can live a full life no matter what the restrictions are, no matter the limitations, no matter the challenges. You're preparing to face the future and make the best of it for as many days as possible. It gives me a lot of comfort knowing that I've done my best and so my days will be the best that they can be, no matter what the circumstances. If you enjoyed my video, I hope you'll share it with someone you think might like it. Please subscribe to the Alaska Granny channel.